Hi, welcome to Code Rage 9. My name is Marco Cantu, and I'm a product manager of Rad Studio at Mercador Technologies. This session is the Delphi keynote. It's going to offer an overview of where the product is and uh, where it, it is going, which are the directions of the technologies we are working on to. This is my contact information, my email, a Twitter account for chatting over this three days of code rage and my blog. So again, the idea about this session is to have a look at where the product is and where the product is going. And rather than doing that in an abstract way, we're going to go through features that have been added to XC7 and the feature, most of these features actually highlight the product directions. So rather than spending time on, on a future potential uh, ideas, it will be more integrated into what's, what's, into, what's in the product today and, and where the product is going and will keep going in the, in the near future. So that's the idea. I'm not going to show uh, demos of the XC7 technologies on purpose, for, first because the 30 minutes for these sessions are, are not a lot, considering the amount of, of new features that have been added to Delphi. And the second is that over these three days, well, it already started, but over this, these three days, you'll get a lot of in-depth sessions covering each and every of the new technologies. So rather than having light um, and, and very limited demos of a couple, I just uh, wait and let uh, specific sessions get in-depth onto, onto the features. And again, there is plenty of information over these three days of Code Rage. I uh, really recommend you stay online or just get a few that are more, more relevant for you and then follow up with the recordings later on. So where is the product today? Uh, it's hard to tell. It was easier in the early days when it was a Windows client server development product. Now it's really a multi-phase product. Windows client server development is still key and Fireduck really is what today is making the product significantly better and more powerful in that direction. But it's not Windows only, it's also multi-device development, it's also integration with devices, integration with REST and cloud services, integration with um, data in general, the ability to interact with the environment through mapping, through sensors, uh, good quality in the UI in terms of styling and modern UI development, uh, of course, the mobile side of the product, which works alongside with the uh, Windows side, support for new technologies, support for 64-bit, something not each and every of our customer have already migrated to, even on Windows. And so it, there is a lot going along. Uh, all of these features have actually been added before XC7, and although some of them have been extended in the current version of the product. Before we go to the specific, I think it's important to remember how Delphi is different than other products in the same space, other development tools. First and foremost, it is component-based. Uh, that's something that's easy to take for granted, but if, for example, if you look at the current scenario of mobile development, not everything is component-based, and Harness is not even through on the Windows platform. Rapid visual development still provides a very significant saving in terms of development time and development effort. And the way we abstract the platform APIs on Windows, the same we've done throughout other platforms, Android, iOS, and Mac. So the component-based system actually helps and improves on the um, platform API abstraction. And great data access. These are some of the core tenets of the product. And again, the data access also works and is easier through uh, a component-based uh, architecture. 
Now, of course, a component-based architecture without a strong foundation would be uh, good for RAD, good for prototypes, but not good for final deployment. Now, what makes Delphi different, and, and that's true since Delphi 1 was released, is that behind this component-based architecture, there's a very strong object-oriented architecture. There, is, there are optimized compilers, used to be one. Now we're shipping six different Object Pascal compilers with um, RAD Studio and Delphi, at least at the enterprise level, or if you have the mobile plugin. A strong object-oriented architecture means that there are scenarios and there are cases you don't only want to use components because the application size would be uh, tremendous and unmanageable. So you can actually, at times, set aside the component model a bit, uh, leverage it only for portions of the application, and create uh, object-oriented architectures. That's something that is there, is available. Uh, there are libraries and, and technologies that lets you leverage the, a pure object-oriented foundation. And the other thing I wanted to point out is that the same exact model, the same architecture that most of you have used in the VCL Windows world, the same approach, the same architecture has been extended to the FireMonkey and multi-device development world. So the approach is the same, the overall model is the same. Of course, details vary uh, quite a bit. So if this is the common foundation, there are clearly two sides of the product. One is the easy migration and the easy embracing of mobile development. And mobile development is relevant today. It's not something for tomorrow. Uh, but the advantage that Delphi provides, you can take a lot of your code with you. And if not the code line by line, at least all of the concept, all of the approaches that you've been using in the product. It is the same development model, it is the same core class library, it is the same programming language, it is the same development tool. The goal of our multi-development, multi-platform development is really single code base. Uh, that's a bold proposition, but as you've seen over the last few years, we've been able to deliver on a single code base scenario. And actually Windows XC7 adds even more to this uh, idea with the multi-device designer. Other core features are the ability to do full prototypes uh, with live data at design time, but then scale those prototypes into production without having to throw them away. Support for a lot of data Remoting data technologies from backend as a service providers to our own enterprise application platform, uh, REST clients, cloud support. So it's a complete mobile development tool that goes beyond uh, a single platform, embracing iOS and Android, and even lets you use the same foundation, the same code, and target also desktop platforms like Mac and Windows. On the other side, uh, Delphi still is and remains a core Windows development with the best Windows class library available today, which is the uh, VCL library. The desktop platform, if you are focused on Windows only, is a, a tremendous asset with a huge ecosystem of third-party components and this is something that's here to stay. It's not going away. It's a great technology for Windows 8. It will be a great technology for Windows 10 development. Not only you can keep your focus on Windows development, but you can leverage the mobile side of the product to do integration of desktop and mobile technologies and to do integration of desktop and Internet of Things technology uh, through Bluetooth or through mo mobile conduits. There is one specific technology, which we call up tethering, that lets you, in a very simple way, uh, bridge desktop and mobile application and uh, have them work together. This is, again, something quite unique in the development scenario and something a lot of our customers are embracing, uh, really enjoying using. So let's look at XC7 specifically from 
very high and above, the focus is multiple, is focus on keep pushing the multi-device development scenario, uh, pushing on connectivity. And again, that's something that goes beyond mobile and even embraces Windows. Improve on code performance, not just with our compilers, but with a new parallel programming library, uh, adding a new middle tier solution and pushing and increasing the product quality. These are some of the tenets of this product today. Now, let's get into some more specifics, starting with the Windows side. There are some new language extensions, uh, as I was mentioning, parallel library, improvements in various areas, even some new VCL components. So this is the summary of some of the core features that a VCL developer could benefit by upgrading to XC7. There is more than this, but this is uh, certainly a list of the core features. So let us go into this a little bit more in detail. New in the Object Pascal language is the support for some improvement in the support for dynamic arrays. This is actually a very nice, even a small feature. You can now concatenate dynamic arrays using just the plus sign and uh, also other RTL functions have been extended to uh, cover dynamic arrays. It could be seen like as just a simple, small syntactic sugar, but actually it explains a bit more uh, on the features that uh, are being pushed in terms of the product. Dynamic arrays are the way to go for uh, array and flexible uh, data structures like this. Uh, there is a session afterwards when I'm actually going to get into some more details and you might have already seen information about this feature. Uh, the threading library, the parallel library, which is again is subject to quite a few sessions, is uh, relevant uh, and it basically has two sides. One is performance driven, so the ability to change your traditional for loops and turn them into parallel for loops to take advantage of multi-core CPUs and the other is in terms of asynchronous f operations and more flexible use of background threads through the use of tasks and futures. These are great technologies that you can leverage to simplify your uh, multi-threaded applications and also take fully advantage of the uh, actual uh, CPU and its power without having to bother too much at the low level or even manage directly and manually manage threads and uh, scheduling threads or anything like that. The, you just create tasks and these tasks can be executed um, in an optimized fashion by the scheduler. There are new VCL specific components. Uh, again, I'm going to have a session on VCL later on and I'm going to cover some of this in details. In XC6, we added a taskbar button component uh, that has task progress bar, uh, custom previews, overlay icons, and quite a few features. Now, the important thing is this is a, really a VCL specific component that lets you better integrate with recent version of Windows, Windows 7, Windows 8, and well, in the future Windows 10. Similarly, if you want to handle custom items in your uh, taskbar button, what you need to do is to, uh, what you can do is use the new jump list component. You just drop these components and customize the uh, categories. Um, very easy to use, very flexible, uh, just a wrapper of some uh, not so trivial APIs. So it's actually a nice addition. So these two components that often work together lets you fully customize the um, taskbar buttons for your application like most of the professional and high quality applications do. Uh, Bluetooth on Windows is certainly a welcome addition in XC7. Uh, we offer Bluetooth support at two levels. Of course, we ha do have the API wrappers available for both standard Bluetooth and the uh, Bluetooth Lower Energy or Bluetooth LE. For the Bluetooth LE, there is a component you can drop into your applications to directly talk with devices and gadgets. Although keep in mind that Bluetooth LE support is available in Windows 8 and not on older versions 
uh, at least not out of the box. Uh, standard Bluetooth has been available for a little more time, and beside the APIs, we do have integration with app tethering, so you can now have your mobile phone and your VCL application or FireMonkey desktop application talk over Bluetooth rather than over Wi-Fi. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, app tethering can really bring a lot of new life and new capabilities to existing applications by doing uh, mobile tethering. Um, there are countless examples. One that um, was mentioned to us by a customer uh, who's building um, software for doctors is actually quite nice. These doctors have this VCL application where they store all of the information about their patients. But what happens is that they need to take pictures of, uh, for example, a bruise or something for, for of the patient, and then they have, they currently using a very manual and cumbersome way to move those pictures from their mobile phones or the devices used to, to take the pictures to the application. Now with app tethering, it's, 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 they don't even have to write the code because we actually ship a demo that does exactly that. You take a picture with the phone and send it directly into an image sitting into your VCL application, could be a DB image, so uh, automatically the information is stored into the database. Remote control and data exchange are the two facets of app tethering. And the other thing that's great is there is automa automatic discovery, so you don't, have, you don't need a server, you don't need a configuration, you don't need to set an IP address, um, it can actually pick up things automatically, although there's been some extensions to XC6, from XC6 to XC7 to fine-tune the uh, IP-based discovery uh, if needed. Um, so app tethering is absolutely a great feature that lets you modernize your application without throwing away the investment on uh, Windows Desktop which won't make sense. I mean, it won't make sense for the doctor to move his patient processing application to his phone uh, because that would be a little tricky to handle, but it would make, it makes sense to have interaction from the phone to the actual application running on his uh, computer. There are other runtime library improvements in XC7. OmniXML support in TXML document has been added. The most relevant goal, of course, is for multi-device. Uh, on Windows, you can still rely on Microsoft XML, but if you want to have a single uh, model throughout platforms, uh, OmniXML is actually quite a fast uh, engine. You can pick OmniXML as a default, even for so processing, or uh, change another uh, standard default through some better configuration than we had in the past. Uh, there's another unit uh, again, showing some of our directions, there is a system net encoding unit that puts together features that were available either on in the SOAP subsystem, in the Indy uh, library, or in other uh, system libraries, but they were somehow spread around. Now we are trying really to build a rather complete set of RTL system units that cover all of the foundations for your development effort. And all of this, of course, in a cross-platform and multi-platform fashion. Database access, of course, is king in Delphi, has always been from day one. Local and client-server access um, can be done with multiple technologies, but our push, our primary technology today, and, and where all of the new development is happening, is in Fardac. Uh, Fardac is a marvelous, extremely powerful, very flexible, uh, universal data ac access layer. And what's nice about Firedock is it really can put a lot of fun uh, back into uh, database development. It solves a lot of issues for you, so there's less code you have to write. It has some tremendous power, including the ability to do uh, in-memory joins of um, tables that come from different data sources. That's an absolutely terrific feature among the thousands of other terrific features that Fardac has. And again, there are sessions to go in depth into Fardac and what's new in Fardac. In mentioning local development, notice that there is one significant new feature that's part of XC7, which is the uh, availability of a free deployment for IB Lite, the uh, Lite version 
of interbase, which hasn't got much in terms of being light. It's actually a full blown uh, da uh, interbase database that you can ship, binary compatible with the GDP files. It only has a size restriction, which would probably be good for most uh, local database uh, applications. And it lacks encryption, something you can easily add on top of it without changing anything in your code, just uh, by um, buying, in this case, a distribution license for the encrypted databases. So IB Lite was already available on iOS and Android, is now also available on Windows and Mac. And yes, BDE is for the first time ever since Delphi 1 is not part of the shipping version of XC7, although it's a separate download, so you can still get it. It's kind of the last call. If you still have anything BD related, please get rid of it as soon as possible. Uh, we won't really hold it around uh, for much longer. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention you might have missed in XC6 is the is one significant evolution and at the db.pass unit at the T dataset, and that's for all datasets, not just Firelock or not just something specific specific. Uh, library. Uh, it is the way persistent fields can be merged with dynamic fields. So you can have now calculated persistent calculated fields without creating all fields persistent. That means if you change dynamically the query to add more fields, everything will, will work smoothly. And similarly, you can also create the common fields as persistent fields, but then add further fields to, the, to a que dynamic query, and those new fields would just show up. To have the same effect before was really quite complex. Now there are field options uh, with auto creation, position, and other features that are really extremely powerful. So for database developers, and I guess most of you are, uh, this is a, a really an astonishing new feature um, that's been added to the T dataset class. Uh, again, Fardac is our data access cornerstone high performance, fun to use, universal data access. Uh, everything is in source code, no DLLs to deploy, no DLLs to distribute. Uh, you have the source code for everything to browse and navigate through. Uh, and that adds a lot to the uh, power and usability of this set of components. Uh, there are some new specific features in Firedac, uh, namely blob streaming and file stream support for Microsoft SQL Server. And another very significant feature is this new batch move component that has a full architecture of readers and writers that lets you write and read data and metadata between databases. So that's, for example, a great technology to migrate your old leftover products files to interbase, but you can actually also migrate from the SQL Server to Oracle and vice versa and migrate between data between different uh, vendors, between different uh, databases. Uh, notice there is also a script, it's called refine. Refine is actually a, a regular expression search and replace engine, and there are a few scripts specifically for migrating the BD components, not the data, but the actual components of your applications to the equivalent Firedac uh, components. So that's the more standard, traditional, if, if you want to say VCL, Windows, uh, side of the product, although, although some of the features I've mentioned actually do apply to FireMonkey as well from the parallel library to all of the new features in Firedac. Uh, there are specific XC7 features that are focused on multi-device though that is certainly w worth mentioning. And here is again kind of the summary, uh, although we have seen the details of a couple of this. Uh, first of all, just in case you need uh, another reminder, uh, let me underline that mobile is everywhere. Uh, Android today is the most used operating system in the world. Uh, no question asked, by far. Um, you cannot ignore mobile. Uh, you cannot create uh, a development scenario and create applications that just focus on Windows only and completely ignore the uh, mobile side of the world. Again, it's not that you have to move everything to mobile, but there are certainly a lot of features that make sense on mobile and interaction between the two sides, either through a server or direct up tethering is also quite critical. And in this, si in this 
mobile world, Delphi has a unique position along with C++ Builder, of course, and uh, App Method. It is being multi-device and true native. So you don't have to give up the power of the compiler and direct uh, interaction with any uh, platform API to be multi-device. So compared to the single device native to solutions that lets you have you force you to rewrite the code every time, we have a multi-device solution that's not scripted, that doesn't is not like a hundred miles away from your phone hardware like some of the other solutions are. So multi-device and true native is today still a pretty unique proposition that Delphi offers in the mobile world. And just to underline, it's more or less like Windows and VCL where you have APIs and your code has to be written every time for each different API unless you use a component layer that does two things. Not only wraps the API for a single platform, makes it, making it easier to write on that platform, but also wraps the differences between the platforms. So the same component, either visual or database access or a REST API or anything else, file system access, everything is abstracted through classes and components. So in most cases, you don't have to worry about the platform and just write the code. Still, we do offer native API access. And for example, on the Android side, we just added um, a, new a new tool that lets you create the Object Pascal interfaces for uh, Java libraries. And also the IDE provides a flexible and simple way to add extra uh, Java libraries to distribute with your uh, uh, Delphi Android application. So hooking to the APIs is important and it is available through our tools, but using components is what can really make your code easier to write, faster to write, and cross platforms. What's new specifically in XC7 is what we've collectively called Fire UI. And it's actually a set of technologies. Um, it's a mo new multi-device designer that takes advantage of our streaming and differential streaming engines. So you can have different views of the same form and visually create the differences by moving components, by setting new properties, even at the event handlers on one specific platform differently from other platforms. And what happens is that rather than having a full copy of that uh, visual object, you only have the differences. And so it becomes very flexible when you're adding, when you're making any change at the higher level, at the master level, those changes will be reflected back to all views unless you made a specific local change. Um, this, it's the same technology some of you might have used in terms of visual form inheritance, but in this scenario, it's much easier because you have a single form class that has multiple views depending on the platform and even multiple views on the same platform depending on the screen real estate and form sizes. Now, in some scenarios, you don't even need to go to that level because we are starting introducing adaptive components like the multi-view that can actually adapt itself to the target, um, not just operating system, because that's something we already cover with styling, but to the screen estate. So for example, you can have a drawer that becomes a full list depending on the device orientation and the, uh, the uh, device resolution and size. Uh, also, we've added the concept of uh, platform awareness in through behavioral services. So for example, when you need to determine the position of a um, tab in a tab control, Rather than forcing it to be top or bottom, you can uh, have a new property that's called platform and at runtime, it will pick the right position for the uh, given platform. Again, the multi-device designer um, has a lot of power, uh, the ability to modify views and to change properties and customize the styling. Uh, is really significant and I really encourage you to come to one of the next sessions that will cover the platform. Uh, there is actually a lot more in FireMonkey from desktop support for multi-monitors, multi-touch, there's a new on-touch event that supports multi-touch at the form level. 
uh, project manager extensions, Android immersive mode and splash screen. And, and that's actually quite significant when you're using T edit component, edit components on iOS, you can actually use a platform presentation rather than a style presentation. This means that at runtime on the device, the uh, Fire Monkey will just create an ob a native edit object, a platform native native object rather than render with a custom styled control as it was the only option in the past. Gadgets and wearables are on the rise. Um, it's going to be more and more uh, connectivity that matters. And that's certainly true for mobile, but even true for desktop world. Um, Bluetooth LE and app tethering support, as I've already mentioned, are extremely powerful technologies. Uh, this Bluetooth LE component works on most platform we support. That's not true for Bluetooth because there are some platform limitations, but this is a very relevant direction for the product. Um, you can today interact with gadgets, uh, either using Bluetooth or Bluetooth LE, calling, making REST calls over HTTP, integrated with custom native SDKs. Uh, we cover all of these scenarios with our technologies. Mobile data con connectivity is another very significant area. Cloud support has been in the product for quite some, quite some time, and then we added in last couple of years, a REST client library and backend as a service support that's mostly meant for mobile, but honestly can be even be leveraged on desktop. And um, along with our existing multi-tier SDK, which is DataSnap, in XC7, we've added a new solution it's called Enterprise Mobility Services. Again, will be the focus of specific sessions, but it's worth highlighting a couple of key points anyway. It's a turnkey solution compared to the data snap, which is an SDK built it yourself, your solution. And it has a lot of features built into it. it has user management and authentication built into the product, ability to load modules that you write to add custom APIs. It has some very flexible technologies to hook to enterprise databases and comes with a ready to use analytics console for checking users and keeping track of the uh, REST calls. Um, again, the goal is to extend and expand this ready to use solution to make it very fast to build and deploy uh, mobile, but why not even desktop solution with this scenario. Uh, EMS includes several different bits and pieces. Uh, it does include uh, interface to go uh, licenses, so encrypted uh, database on desktop and mobile licenses, and an interbase server is also part of the uh, offer. Again, there are differences between EMS and DataSnap uh, in terms of positioning. Both features are part of the product and will stay part of the product and will be extended uh, in the future. Of course, I covered some of these features over the VCL side, but this uh, from language extensions to parallel library, considering that your phone might have more cores than your current desktop. Um, database and Firedock extensions, these are all features that are shared between uh, the VCL Windows world and the multi-device FireMonkey world. Let me add a couple of final things. One is that we have done new things in the IDE. Uh, while the multi-device designer has been a huge addition and huge effort for the team uh, to come up with um, this very nice piece of technology. Uh, IDE guided tours, you might not have seen those. Uh, if you go to the welcome page, there is a small click and there is a way to create interactive tutorials. We had just started exploring. Uh, version control integration has been updated with uh, Git support and uh, significant updates on the subversion support. Uh, more will be coming, but we're actually quite pleased to have done one step further comp compared to what we were in XC6. And uh, last but not least, if you down, if you in buy and, and install and register XC7 today, you can then download uh, Castelia, which is a very nice IDE plugin, and it's currently free with uh, XC7. 
it's a great solution, offers also uh, refactoring uh, in a smoother way and quite a few other nice uh, features uh, for the editor and the IDE in general. Quality and performance have been a focus of this release as well as the uh, previous one. Uh, with different in different areas, it increased application runtime. Um, we fixed a lot of bugs reported against previous versions, of course, not against the latest one. And also the thing I wanted to highlight is if you really have huge applications, you can use this, the new uh, out of the IDE compilation setting so that when you compile, you spawn a separate process for the compiler. And this should um, let you avoid um, out of memory issues with the um, IDE. A uh, couple of notes on future directions, although again, as I mentioned, having seen what we've added, it also kind of explains where we're going. Um, first, we actually did deliver a few other features uh, after XC7 in the last couple of months from uh, hot fixes to uh, free downloads. Uh, we uh, also, Roman Kassenbaum built a lot of new versions for some of the turbo old timers turbo power components that are actually available and ready to use in xc7 uh, overall there is a new uh, xc7 update coming shortly but a lot of things has been happening in terms of development and effort after uh, xc7 shipped in terms of real future directions of course we'll be monitoring very closely windows 10 and what Microsoft focuses on and where Microsoft pushes Windows 10. The impression we have so far is that desktop will be the focus of Windows 10. And so we are really ready with our technologies to offer one of the best development experiences for Windows 10. Cross-platform development with single source remains a key focus, of course, and we'll try to extend and expand in terms of platforms and reach and features and native integration on that uh, platform. Along with embracing connectivity and embracing Internet of Things in full, and also trying to offer options and solutions. There are already some available in targeting single board computers from the, the Arduino-like boards or Raspberry Pi-like uh, boards. Expand, um, Enterprise Mobility Services and DataSnap beyond Windows with other server platforms. That's another feature we are trying to focus on during the next year. And enhance developer productivity in the IDE. That's an area where Delphi used to shine. Um, we know if we fell a little behind compared to other tools, we're going to have a renewed focus on uh, developer productivity in the uh, IDE. Delphi has a great present and a bright future. Product is doing great and the company is investing in research and development to push the product even more. Uh, you might have noticed uh, more books uh, have been released this year than in the last several years combined. Uh, there are new components coming from, from FireMonkey and BCL. The recognition and the visibility of the product is actually improving significantly, and that's despite all doomsayer, it's not a dead product, quite the opposite. Uh, Delphi offers you a lot of power for you to leverage and extend uh, with great libraries uh, from us and from third party component vendors and even open source third party libraries that are doing a lot. So if you still don't have XC7, uh, buy it, or at least try it today. With the trial comes the free download of the Kodges, uh, latest book. If you buy XC7 Enterprise, there are a couple of active offers. Uh, you can get free rapid uh, SQL. And also you can pay only the upgrade price even if you're coming from some rather old versions of the product. Plus there is a free bonus pack with a lot of freebies uh, from my uh, PDF of the current draft of my book to Mida Converter, Premium Styles, Castelia, as I mentioned, and FastCube for uh, VCL. So if there is any question, I'm here 
for a few more minutes to ask uh, anything you have. And if not, I recommend you keep following uh, Code Rage uh, because there will be lots of great sessions delving into the technologies that I just mentioned in this keynote. Thanks. Bye. How about a light version of the IDE in FireMonkey for cross-platform development? Uh, well, the rebuilding the IDE in FireMonkey would be a significant effort. Um, it's not that completely unconceivable, but unless you want to have an IDE that has 10% of the features, it might take some uh, time to get that working. And it's not just the IDE, it would have to be IDE and compilers and uh, all of the various assets that um, we ship along with the uh, IDE. What sort of improvements have been in the help system? Uh, mostly the improvement is around content. Uh, we have tried to streamline the uh, content development uh, so that we have more API, more general uh, tutorials and more APIs uh, covered, although it is difficult because we tend to keep pushing and adding features up to the last minute when the doc writers don't have any more time to um, to document those features. So it's, it's, we still have to improve the process. The other area that we are going to uh, work on is actually the uh, help engine itself because the one we are using is really not in a great shape. So in either the next or the following version, we'll have a different uh, help engine or help viewer engine. Okay. Uh, what format are the books in? I'm not sure if they're referring to the uh, bonus books we're providing, I'm guessing, or the other books that are being published about Delphi. Uh, I think, the, well, the bonus books are PDF uh, books. The other books being published are in, in various formats. Uh, I know Daniela Tate's book is available in print, and so is Nick Hodge's book. Um, and again, also it's available on PDF. My book is currently PDF only because it's not finished. When it will be done early next year, I'll get it in print as well. Uh, and I know there is uh, there are a couple of other books uh, coming or being completed um, for uh, for uh, various areas of the product. Yep. I have print copies of both Daniel's and uh, Nick's books at home. Um, the guided tours for the IDE, where can you find those? Oh, just uh, just open the welcome page, and there is a very small link <laughs> in the page that is a showcase for a guided tour. You click on it, and it starts popping up like balloon hell that drives you, and you have you are forced to do specific steps. So it's a way to teach. Okay, open this dialog, fill this form, click this button, and you have to follow the steps to to complete the sequence. The one that's in the product is um, guided to the multi device designer. Are there more guided tours coming? Uh, hopefully, yes. The engine is there. It's a JavaScript, HTML slash JavaScript engine that lets you hook to the IDE. It's not documented, but that's something we're looking forward, along with providing some, um, some tools. If you have specific interests or specific ideas, we are very interested in uh, getting help or getting external people to create uh, extra tools. Okay. Here's a question about why we have a uh, six-month release cycle versus uh, a longer, more drawn-out release cycle. Can you want to mention why we do that every six-month release, roughly? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, that's that's quite straightforward. Uh, we probably, if we if we consider what's happening, for example, on iOS, we should probably need to have a three-month release cycle uh, because we released the product uh, two weeks before. Uh, Apple released a new um, update software that would bitch with the, uh, our linker. Now we have currently a fix for that linker issue, and Apple announces new requirements starting uh, early next year. So uh, close to our next release cycle somehow for uh, an App Store submission. So it's very difficult to get to a year release cycle when uh, the players in the field, like the platform vendors, change the rules or uh, add new compulsory requirements at two or three months uh, distance one from the other. Uh, so for the mobile side of the product, keeping this release cycle is really um, it's something we, can, we, we cannot go away from. Android Intel support, is that something we could expect in the next year? 
Um, Android Intel support can be tackled by different perspectives. Um, one that might end up being good enough, uh, according to our ex current experiment, is via the libhoudini library that ships with all of the new um, Android Intel devices. We have, par we have had partial success with PharmaKey applications running on that library, and it's something we are actively investigating, uh, actually with, uh, along with Intel. And we are also looking for the opportunity of building a native uh, compiler tool chain targeting the Android Intel uh, platform. It's still a rather small percentage of devices. Again, we want to make sure that PharmaKey applications run on those. Uh, we might also want to consider optimizing them on the platform by providing a native tool chain. Okay, that's good. Um... How do you access IB Lite in the VCL? Oh, it's just a driver. You can, for example, if you're using, if you're using FireDuck, there is one specific uh, driver for IB Lite compared to the one for uh, Interbase. Um, and that driver will basically hook in the um, local DLL and the other files that you have to distribute to, uh, along with the application. You can also, of course, use IB Lite from DB Express and from other, from uh, IBX uh, and from other components. Does the license restrict using XC7 to create a compiler slash IDE? The license restricts XC7 from creating a competing tool uh, with uh, XC7 itself. Uh, yes, that's a specific requirement because the um, honestly, if you uh, if you just take our runtime library, uh, you can take FireMonkey because the FireMonkey deployment is uh, something you can do. You can deploy runtime packages on most platforms. So you can, if you take all of our packages and just create a very light development tools that does, for example, form streaming and uh, attach some scripting via RTTI, then you can probably build a competing tool in a matter of uh, uh, rather limited amount of time. And we, we don't think that's, that would be fair uh, from um, a competitor to do. Uh, there are other reasons why we want to uh, potentially limit the uh, use of our product for uh, uh, other types of uh, competitors. Now, if you are, have any doubt, just feel free to send me email. I'll get in touch with uh, legal. We are more than happy to provide a specific written authorization for you to keep going and working on your product uh, as much as we are we are okay we don't we don't feel that is threatening uh, our our uh, core assets okay um, right. and also actually even if we didn't have that that written uh, the uh, intellectual property protection and the patents we have would probably give us enough room to uh, complain and beat you anyway. So spelling that out doesn't really make a big difference uh, from uh, from a different scenario. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I actually noticed we're actually going over time a little bit here. Uh, we're just looking at the schedule. We have the next session is 34 minutes long, so we do have a little time to we'll keep going a few more questions here, and uh, then we'll start our next session in a little bit. Um, what about Windows Store support in Windows 10, since Microsoft is opening that up? Oh, well, yeah, we are actually monitoring that very, very closely. I was personally very happy about that. Um, it, we still don't know the details, and we are trying to track those with, with Microsoft. What is my personal hope is that they will allow for binary applications directly distributed via the store. For example, that's exactly what Mac is doing with the Mac, uh, what Apple is doing with the Mac store. And at that point, we certainly want to be sure that uh, Delphi compiled the binary applications will, will work smoothly. Right now, we don't have any issue with 64-bit apps. We might have issues with the 32-bit counterpart because of the lack of the um, safe exception handling requirement that Microsoft uh, imposes. But that's something that we can potentially work on if uh, this becomes a differentiator for having or not having an application on the on the store. Um, again, could be very interesting. Um, we are talking with Microsoft to figure out the exact technical details. 
Um, how do you use IB Light on Windows? Do you have to use PA Server to test on the development machine? Um, that's something I haven't personally done, but um, I don't think it's it's actually a significant effort. I mean, IB Light is just a DLL that that you load through an interface again using some specific components or, or drivers. Are we going to see FireMonkey and VCL in the same applications to help migration of older applications? Uh, that's something that could be interesting and, and I'd personally like to have. It is slightly more difficult than it seems at first sight. I know that there are tools that let you just put together uh, units with the two libraries and just compile everything together. Uh, what ends up is you end up with uh, two message loops in Windows, which is uh, not exactly ideal, and the two message groups can actually bitch each other a little bit. Um, so, honestly, just st stitching together the two sides somehow works, but it's not um, good quality and it's not foolproof. There are uh, specific issues and errors. Um, now, changing the way the message group works is something possible, but it's not a trivial issue. And of course, if we do it, we have to make sure that we're not breaking a few million VCL applications out there. So it's not a light and, and trivial uh, couple of days implementation effort, but it's something that would certainly be uh, nice to have. Right now, the best approach for combining is through uh, DLL boundary, because that makes sure that the uh, message handling is, is performed properly on either sides. Is there an ETA for XE7FD1? Uh, no, there is not an ETA, only because um, we are double checking the uh, the quality of the upgrade. There is nothing worse than an upgrade that breaks features that were working in the in the previously released version. So there is a little bit of um, QA that's uh, being done uh, to make sure that everything is uh, smooth. So when it's done, when it's ready, and, and when we don't have any more open issues, uh, we are going to release it. Uh, where's the option for the out of ID compiler? Uh, well, I should look for it. I don't have the ID in front of myself, but if you go to project uh, compilation, uh, I think that's in the area. I can certainly look that up and, and put in the answer in that question in a few minutes. Yeah, I remember seeing it. I just can't recall exactly the location is. Um, 